No, it's not Twitter. It's my own internet. My kids probably unplugged something. But, you know, as I was just saying, as I was just saying, when you have kids, they unplug cords, you know. I can't even blame this internet connection on the deep state. This is just 100% my kids. So, it's not even, um, not even them. But I, I you know, but I do want to know, you know, where's my president? My country's burning. And it's getting old. It's getting old, Jared Ivanka. Get a clue. Get a clue. If the connection drops, we'll do another one. Doesn't matter to me. If the connection drops, we'll do another periscope. Not a big deal. I'm gonna like I said, we're we're hanging out. We're gonna watch. We're gonna watch our country burn together, I guess. Tag. You know, it's kind of weird. Growing up, growing up on satellite TV, one of my favorite prognosticators, theologians. Dr. Gene Scott. And, you know, he smokes cigars, relax, just chat with people. And I always thought, you know, it'd be kind of, I wonder if you could ever do that. And then you become what you watch. You become your vision, right? You become your vision. So I am now the guy ranting while smoking a cigar. It's pretty fun, I'm actually. Why is the stream so laggy? You tell me. Deep state, maybe? Who knows? My kid unplugged a cord probably. I have two daughters. They unplug things. So I just I want to know where my president is. Right? I want to know where my president is. What do you guys want to talk about? Ask me anything. Country's burning. I'm just hanging out. Ask me anything. What do you guys want to see? I'll read your comments on Periscope. I'm on YouTube too, but I don't even know how to do that. YouTube so shadow banned my page that I don't even know how to log into it anymore. So I'll, I'll read your comments on Periscope. What do you guys What do you guys want to talk about? We can kind of talk about anything. Thank you for the super heart, the mouthy mom. I can't actually collect the super hearts because I don't know why, but it's a nice collection. I guess... Broadly speak, any good books I've read lately? You know, 11 Minutes by Paulo Coelho, Coelho, Brazilian writer, wrote The Alchemist. 11 Minutes, beautiful book. Do I need help with graphic design? You got laid off. Um, a tough question. I mean, I, do I need help? But I don't even know what I need help with. Right. I don't even know what I need help with. Press 1 if you're able to watch the stream. Press 2 if I've been disconnected. My Wi-Fi is cutting out. It's not even a conspiracy. I think it's just my kids unplug something. So if my kids unplug something, let me know. But press 1 if you're able to see me and hear me, even if the connection is not the greatest. And I'm getting office space, by the way. So with the commercial real estate collapse, I'm, yes, Black Lives Matter have disavowed the looting. Shut up. Go away. They have. Read my sh timeline. Well, they got to deny. They, they have. The Black Lives Matter said, get the fuck out of here, Antifa. Quit asking me your dumb fuck questions that you think are gotchas. Well, they got to disavow. They've disavowed it 10 fucking times. This is like when you dumb fucks be like, well, this guy that you knew one time and was in a picture with in 2016, do you disavow him? Do I got to, like, disavow people 20 times a day? That's what you do. Oh, has Black yes, Black Lives Matter told Antifa, get the fuck out of here. There are 15 videos I posted of that. So quit with the bullshit, right? Quit with the bullshit. Our country's burning, and you want to have little clever little points. Oh, well, have they done this? This is not a time for little clever fucking cutesy games. And I like clever little cutesy games because I'm fucking clever and cute. When the country's burning, this is the problem with fucking people's minds, is not knowing when to shift. I'm all for clever cutesy little games and all this stuff and da-da-da-da-da. I'm all for it. 
the right time. When the country's burning, it's not the time, right? Black Lives Matter has told them to leave. What are you going to do? What are they going to beat up Antifa? And, and, then, and then you get in trouble for, it's like a catch-22. Pasobic's here. We know we have the same problem. We would hold events and then undesirables would come to our events. And we were like, we don't want you here. Do not come to our events. And then the media would write it up and say, oh, so-and-so attended a Cernovich event. Leaving out that I told them to not be here. So here's how bad it got. I'll make a confession time. It got so bad that I put it downstream and I said, look, if this guy shows up again, there are a couple people that are going to take him to a place where there aren't cameras and infer which are well. That's what we had to do finally because it's like I don't like him. He comes to my things to make me look bad, but he knows he can get pressed by showing up to my event to make me look bad. So then I just was like back channel, like, look, I got three guys and there's a place and there's just no camera. And if you show up, that's where you're going to end up. And you can infer what you want. It's not a threat, but you can infer what you will about what might happen in that staircase where there's no cameras. And that solved the problem. But that's the level that we had to take it to. And that's kind of what Black Lives Matter has to do. They just have to put the word out that, hey, this is our protest. We're going to keep it peaceful. If Antifa shows up to smash things and make us look bad by proxy, you know what? There's a lot of places where there aren't cameras, and a couple of you are going to end up in that place, and we're not making any threats. We're not telling you anything bad is going to happen. We're just going to say there's a lot of places where there aren't cameras, and if you show up to make our shit look bad, you're going to end up in one of those places. And that's all we're going to say about that. That's what you have to do. That's what we did. Problem solved. People that I don't like don't come to my shit anymore. I had one guy come to my one event, cigar thing. He started talking shit, and, you know. He ended up falling back into a crowd of people. I don't know what happened. Um, I don't remember exactly what happened. I just know that he started talking shit to me. And next thing you know, I saw him. Was, he was like falling back into people, you know. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what happened. But that was the last time it happened. And that, that's how you clean up your, that's how you clean up your events. So if you're holding events and people are showing up and they're behaving badly to make you look bad, to kind of clout chase on your name and frame you essentially, they just fall down. Nobody knows how they fell down. Fell down the stairs. I don't know how I fell down. Slip, accident, must have been wet, you know? It's a shame shame gosh and then you know what happens that's things get cleaned up that's how that's how it goes that's how it goes and that's what black lives matter is fundamentally going to have to do with this antifa people is they're just going to have to say look if you come up to like cause trouble hey, you know a lot can happen in a big town it's a big city it's a big city. A lot can happen. We'd, we'd hate to see anything happen to you. We'd, just, we'd hate to see it. So, you know, be, be nice. Behave yourself. Oh, I'm not making a threat. Are you kidding me? How dare you? How dare you claim that I'm threatening you? This is an insult to me. I'm just saying it's a big city. A lot of places, no cameras. Behave. Don't be a criminal. Don't make us look bad. Don't try to frame us for your thing. Go do your own thing. And then suddenly people are like, oh, maybe it's not such a good idea, you know? That's all I'm saying. Because I'm pro-peace. I can... Um, so I'm just saying that I'm pro-peace. The violent stuff never ends well. Uh-oh, we have a guest. Sorry, right. I can't smoke around you. We'll do a puzzle a little bit, okay? No, I, I already did it. Oh, okay, what are you doing right now? I, I do you want to say hi to people real quick? Hi. Okay, you can come say hi to people. And then you got to go back in the house. Okay. Oh, who's that? What's your name? 
Syra? Okay, you want to say hi? You want to say a message to people? Okay. Julius loves me. He does? Your dog loves you? That's good. Did you do a puzzle earlier? Yeah. Okay. No, no, don't push the buttons. Right? <laughs> I, I, we can't have you push buttons, okay? All right, I'll be in the house in a few minutes, okay? Don't push the buttons. No, 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 no buttons. Okay, say bye to the people. Bye, people. Here, look hi. See the camera? Say hi, bye. Hi, bye, people. All right, I'll be right in the house, okay? No, because I, I, you got to open the door, okay? You got to open the door, okay? No, 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 no. Please leave the, um, please leave the light on, okay? Just trust me. You can come back in a little bit, okay? That was my daughter, who's always welcome on the streams, but I don't want to smoke around her. Not good. Uh, you know, you shouldn't smoke around your kids, even cigars. So when I'm doing the, when I'm doing a cigar, I just she'll be back though. Well, like I said, we're gonna be here. We're gonna be here for a while. The other one went out because Cyrus hid my lighter on me. All right. Someone just got shot in Detroit, it sounds like. Yeah, so things are just really not going well, it looks like. Things are not go Let me see if we can get the, uh, get the feed here. Let's see if we can get the other. We'll get the feed here. Split screen this bad boy. Let's see if I get my tech to work. Boom. Press 1 if you see the, um, the side screen. Right, I gotta make sure the, the volume works or whatever it is, but so yeah, so we'll we'll look at some videos right now together that I thought were pretty um so here we go. Let's watch this. So right now we asked white allies to go home and some of them insisted on throwing rocks, bottles, etc. Please. Police responded with gas. I'm disgusted by how allies <laughs> ignored our ass to go home and sit. So this is what I mean. So Black Lives Matter are telling Antifa, go away, you preppy college kids. Go away. And they won't go away. It's like, what do you do? That's the whole point. It's like, what do you expect these people to do? They're just like, go away. And they won't go away. So CNN being attacked, I thought, was um, revealing because I had done, um, you know, okay, quick question. Have you ever seen a, a CNN reporter be critical of Antifa, right? I guess that'd be my question. Um, have you ever, ha you know, have you ever gone on Jake Tapper's timeline and seen him be like, man, Antifa, they're like out of control, you know? They're just, it's a disgrace, they're out of control. So have you ever, have you ever seen that, right? And a lot of people go, well, maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know how bad it is out there. So I had sent to, um, to Jake Tapper, and I always send these, multiple emails. And Jake Tapper's from Philadelphia. He claims to support the Marines and troops because, you know, he goes, oh, we're doing a fundraiser for the military. So he's pro-military, and he lives in Philadelphia. So I tell him, hey, Jake, hey, Jake, I know you're from Philadelphia. I wanted to make sure you saw this story. You never reported it. Maybe you didn't see it. It seems that an attack on U.S. Marines happened in your hometown. And the Marine was, Mex the Marine was Mexican. So this is really, this, this is actually like a, what you call a gut check story. So you're Jake Tapper and your hometown, Philadelphia, a U.S. Marine is attacked. Oh, and the Marine is Hispanic. And they called him the SPIC word. So Antifa said, you, because Antifa's all white people, so they use these racial slurs. Uh, um, there's a video I can't find right now, but I tweeted out where there was a bunch of white people yelling at a black ICE officer in Portland, you're a class traitor, and then they use the N-word with the hard R, right? So, so the racial slurs are flying from white ISIS, I, a.k.a. Antifa, in a way that you would never hear here. So it's like, hey, Jake, Mexican, Marine, attacked by Antifa, your hometown, maybe tweet a link to the article. 
right? Maybe it's not newsworthy enough to be on CNN, although they've done segments on bad tweets that I made jokes that I did, didn't, never made anyway. It's all fake. And nope, nothing from Jake. So I sent them this email a couple times. Hey, Jake, you're from Philip. So they know. Because cause you always be like, well, maybe they didn't know this happened. Dude, I email these people. And I email their official corporate accounts, and I CC their personal email accounts. And Jake, one time I was out with Arthur Schwartz, and Jake texted Schwartz, how could he be with Cernovich? He's such, they call me anti-Semite, which is just dumb for a number of reasons. So the idea that Jake Tapper doesn't know who I am, he literally texted Arthur Schwartz when we were smoking cigars. Well, we, Schwartz wasn't, but we were at Hunt and Fish Club in New York, and Jake's like, the Cernovich is scum of the earth. So Jake knows who I am. My email comes to me, he sees it. And there's a Hispanic Marine attacked by Antifa, and Jake's got no problem with that. No problem with that. And, right, so I just, I have countless emails like this. It's countless, countless emails like this. So they all know, and they don't report it, and then you have to look at it from my perspective, right? Do you know how, if you've been around Cerno Land for a while, how, how long have you been reading me? One year, two year, three year, four year, five year? Type in a comment. How long have you been reading Cernovich? One, American So Woke, probably 10 years. So one year, two year, three year, four year, five years. How many years have you read Mike Cernovich? Right? And... If you've read Mike Cernovich, you've known that there are literally, this is not a joke, this is literally thousands of articles about me and bad jokes I made on the internet. Not violence, not me attacking people, not me inciting violence against people, not me advocating for violence against people, but just things where you're like, Cernovich made a shitty joke in 2012, eight years ago. Sorry. First of all, it's fake. Joy Reid shit's fake, my shit's fake too. So nothing about me is even real. But assuming it's real, assuming it's real, which is not, it's all fake, they just airtime like you wouldn't believe. Can you believe these fucking tweets from Cernovich? My God. Whoa, whoa. But then Antifa beats the shit out of a Hispanic Marine in Jay Tapper's hometown, and he won't tweet, tweet an article. So CNN is all in for Antifa. And then tonight they get attacked. Rather than, you know, yell at us. Downtown, so and now we've scared. exited all... Um, how's the audio? Press 1 if you hear the audio well. Press 2 if you don't hear it. So if you hear the audio well, press 1 if you don't hear it, press 2. This is a good workout. We've done several miles through downtown, and now we've exited off of 35W. It's not clear where they're going now. I want to give you a sense of sort of what it looks like. They've lost some of the protesters but most have stuck with them but it's now strung out a long way along 35w and they are moving toward it's not entirely clear they may be moving toward the fifth precinct as well which is where sarah seidner is heading to I mean, check this out turn around this way ken and they have not only not only protesters walking now but they have us so i will just show you this is like reality so here we go. Let's, so let's watch this. So a lot of people. Why doesn't Black Lives Matter tell Antifa to go away? Here you go. Black Lives Matter. If you're clipping this for culture, Jesse, if you're watching and you're clipping it for culture, let's title this clip. Black Lives Matter tells Antifa to get out of their events and quit being criminals. So, Black Lives Matter's telling them, get away from our shit. You criminals. Get out of here. They're telling Antifa to go away. The story should be on every cable news network. If you really believed in what I believe, which is unity and treating people with respect, 
I'm telling the truth. The story should be. The story should be get these white privileged rich kid brats out of Black Lives Matter because the white kids are doing the crimes with some street gang street gang elements. It's not Black Lives Matter. That should be the story, <laughs> right? That should be the story. But the media is not going to report that story because the media loves it. The media, they're okay with it. So let's watch Killer Mike. Ted did a great good segment. So if, if you're watching from culture, Killer Mike tells CNN to take a seat. CNN, Ted did a great thing. I love CNN, I love Cartoon Network, but I'd like to say to CNN right now, karma's a mother. Stop feeding fear and anger every day. Stop making people feel so fearful. Give them hope. I'm glad they only took down a sign and defaced a building and they're not killing human beings like that policeman did. I'm glad that they only destroyed some brick and mortar and they didn't rip a father from a son. They didn't rip a, fa a son from a mother like the policeman did. <laughs> so, Killer Mike tells CNN, karma. Killer Mike. <laughs> so CNN for years did PR for Antifa. And let's see what happens. Let's just keep watching clips about... Let's just keep on. Oh, here we go. This is a good one. The front of CNN Center was the scene of violent protests. Oh, suddenly, suddenly the protests go from, oh, it's peaceful to violent. Fascinating. What changed? Oh, it's at CNN's front door. Now CNN, they love the police. CNN loves the police. Now the police were going out there tear gassing people. Now CNN, they love the police and their violent protests. But Minneapolis is burning. Detroit, Atlanta burning. But now, whew, how dare. Now they care because it's at their front door. Right? It's at their front door. It's at their, let's watch another, we'll watch another clip because there's just a lot of good clips. For change. can do better. I'm here for change. We've heard the chance of no justice, no peace. Another large object just thrown there at CNN. This is our home, Chris, you know. This is where we come to work every day. Journalists who are trying to tell the truth. So I love this clip. To deliver information. So this clip is a CNN media bro, Antifa apologist. We're the news. We're the truth tellers, man. We're not like these maggots. We're not like these MAGA chuds. We're not like these terrible MAGA chuds, these maggots. We're the good guys. We're the truth tell. This is my, like, just a highlight reel clip. You can't script it better. You can't, if you were making a movie that was fictional and you scripted this, a producer like me, because I make films, would say, come on, guys, this is too, too on the nose is the expression. This is... <laughs> It's like, this is wish fulfillment. There's no way in the world this really happened. This can do better. I'm here for change. We've heard the chance of no justice, no peace. Another large object just thrown there at scene. And this is our home, Chris, you know. This is where we come to work every day. Journalists who are trying to tell the truth, trying to deliver information. It's one of the noble parts about society. And these demonstrators have decided to come here today to take out their frustration and their anger, not just on... The police, right, so if you were doing a film and it was fictional and he said, hey, hey, in this film, a major left-wing figure in a cultural, Killer Mike's a cultural icon. So you would say, look, we're going to have a cultural icon in this movie and he's going to call CNN, the network which is pro Antifa, he's going to say the attacks happening are karma on CNN. And then we're going to have another clip where as the front door of CNN is being broken into, 
and the sign is being defaced, we're going to have another reporter saying, we are, we're truth tellers. We're performing a public service. As a producer, be like, come on, man. If you hand me that script, if you handed me that script, I would say, come on, man. This is, like we, you know, we know it's a, a fictional film, but the audience has to suspend disbelief. And no audience and their suspension of disbelief is going to believe that Killer Mike said CNN being attacked was karma. No one is, who suspended their disbelief is going to believe a footage of a CNN reporter saying, but we're the good guys, truth tellers, public service, as Antifa smashing their doors. Come on, it's just not realistic, you know? A little too, little too on the nose to style it down a little bit. Real life, that's why I love doing documentaries. Right? I do documentaries because real life is less, be or is, is less believable than fiction. Let me say that again. The reason I do documentaries is because real life is less believable than fiction. And because real life is less believable than fiction, you have more creativity doing documentaries. Think about that. Maybe you've never really thought about it that way, the way I, I think about things, but... If you make fictional films and you scripted what we're watching, people would be like, this is a hack film, no creativity, wish fulfillment. You wouldn't believe it. Would, this is just not even transgressive. So documentaries are more unbelievable than fictional fables. So that's why I like doing documentaries. You, ha you actually have more, more creative control. Here we go. Brian Stelter. CNN Valencia reporting from near the CNN Center in Atlanta. This is terrible to witness. See, now they're mad because it's on their front door. Their little golem, their little Frankenstein monster. Now they suddenly care. They didn't care when Antifa was just smashing people, beating up Trump supporters, breaking up. They didn't care. But now suddenly, oh, this is terrible. Can't believe it. Clutch the pearls. And by the way, I'm against all this. So I'm not, I'm actually like, I think this is a terrible thing happening. My, like I said, my country's burning and I'm mad at Trump, but the situation is amusing. So here's, this is a good clip. I, I want to be clear in how okay. I... This is from last night. Mostly a protest. So here we, again, you couldn't script this. If you scripted this, the film wouldn't have to be satirical. There was a film called The Naked Gun, and they had a film where, you know, everything's blowing up. Nothing to see here. Disperse. Disperse. This is so farcical, this clip is, that you couldn't have it in authentic film. It'd have to be in a satirical film because it's too absurd for real film. I, I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not generally speaking unruly. But fires have been started, and and there's a crowd that is. I, I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. So, have you ever seen a more perfect clip than that MSNBC clip? Right. Have you ever seen a more perfect clip than, like, it's burning behind him. And by the way, that shows you how they lie to you. You can watch the video and they still lie to you. They lie to your face when the buildings are on fire. Right? To your own, buildings are on fire. I don't have nothing to see here. So how do you expect them to tell you the truth when there's, Difficult judgments to make, right? Everything is fine. Everything is fine. I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly. But fires have been started, and, and there's a crowd that is... I, I, I... It's a farce. I mean, it, it, it... It is, it is a farce. The, the building is burning behind him. Oh, this is no problem, man. Everything is fine here. Everything is cool, man. You couldn't put that in a non-satirical film. Right? You, you, you couldn't... Um, 
You couldn't put that in a... It has to be satire. Like I said, that's why I like doing documentaries. I like doing documentaries because the real world... Glass? Last night we're told everything's okay, but now, but now it's, now we got a problem. Now they're violent protests. Now, you know, suddenly there's a big problem. Now we got things at the White House. It's just, it's just going off. It's just going off everywhere. Let's go. Let's watch some more. Let's watch more clips. You guys want to call, by the way? I have, do you guys want to call? Anybody want to call? Is Ali here? I didn't see Ali. Oh, there he is. Hi, Ali. Good to see you. Ali, you want to call me? You want to join the Periscope? Is there a way to do that? You want to call me? I kind of want to talk to Ali. Anybody want to call? I have this thing that's expensive, this calling software. It costs me like 100 bucks a month. And we don't use it, but I keep it because it records all the, um, the prior calls. So it's like if I delete the subscription, then I lose literally five years of data. So I keep it, but... Expensive one. Does anybody want to call me? Type yes if you want to call. Type yes. Hold on, I get it. All right, Ali, text Sean and ask her to text me. I, or text me because I can't text my phone. My phone's broken. So text me and then I'll text you the number. We'll get Ali patched in here. We'll, um, we'll get Ali patched. Because yeah, I'm going to talk to my people, you know? Because when I say my people, I mean, you know, my people. I don't mean it the way some people do. You know, there's no, like, racial... might be dying soon. We're going to have to figure that one out. Let me text Shauna. Can you bring me out my power cable? Poor Shauna. Can you bring out my power cable, please? All right. So, yeah, let me, let me, um, let me get this rolling. Look at Ali talking, you know, I'm going to talk to her. To my people. Let's see if we get in. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to get this computer audio only. And we're going to use, all right, speakers. So we're going to connect with Bluetooth. We have a fancy setup here, by the way. And I am going full studio here pretty, pretty quick. So, so yeah, I am going full on, uh, full on studio here pretty quick. And once we do that, because we get everything's cheap now, you know the the world is um. Yeah, I am. Would you um plug that in over there and then plug it here? I need to send Ali the um. There's a like a pull surge protector thing or whatever. So I need to find the number here to get him to call me. Okay, no, no, but I'm gonna text him the conference call number. Okay. Yeah. So there's. You know, there's a lot going on, like I said. And, yes, yeah, so I have Bluetooth to sync it. So we should be, we should have good audio. So Ali's going to call me here in a second, and then I'll take uh, your calls. And then I'll, yeah, I'll take your calls. But, you know, this is, we're in historical times. I haven't, you know, like I said, I haven't, I only stream when, 
This is broken. We got a fire unplugged. God knows what. But we're still live. It's been watching me in the theater of the house. <laughs> Come say hi. <laughs> I just was peeking. Come say hi. <laughs> Come say hi. This is not like a lovey. Lovey dovey. The situation right here. No. It isn't. But I mean, well, I don't I know. feel like now it's It is. I'm keeping it positive. Yeah, I'm um yeah, I'm keeping it positive. Where are the comments? What do you what's going on? <sighs> we gotta read them right here on the Periscope. And you can watch me live on um the you uh the YouTube too. Yes, Ali should be able to call me in real quick. And then we'll chat with him. Let me let me what he um what he has to say. Bye bye. Bye bye. Farewell everybody. Farewell. Ask him, mom. Um, is he asking me what area code he's calling me from, and then um, and then we'll make sure we we have him. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be here for a while. Are you ready? What do you mean? I don't know. What else should I be doing? I think we got him. Where's the password? Where's the password? All right, Ali. Um, let's hear you from Ali. Let's see if we can hear you. No, no, no. I'll, uh, it's good. As long as you give me a message, it's fine. I'll just we gotta just basically I gotta just start locking here and keep it and fix that. Is this charging now? No, no, it's charging. That's fine. It's just not showing up on the the screen at all. Let's just see if we can hear Ali. Oh, that's why it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we should we should be good. Ali. Here we go. Here we go. Can you hear me yet? Yep, we got you good. Okay, you should be live. No, no, it's awesome. charging. That's fine. It's just not showing up on the, the screen at all. Isn't this audio stuff Super fun? Here, Ali. <laughs> all right, you're live, Ali. We got you. How you doing, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah so we should. Isn't this audio mm -hmm. stuff fine? Fun? Ali? Can you hear me? Here we go. Can you hear me yet? Yep, we got you good. Okay, you should be live. No, no, awesome. Charging. Just not showing up on the screen. Can you hear me yet? Isn't this audio stuff fun? All right. Oh, you're they can hear. He can. Like, he he can't know. hear me, yeah, but I'm yeah, coming through his hair. Isn't this audio fun. stuff fine? Oh, that's fine. Fun. So I can't hear Mike. But I can Maybe hear you. Can hear me. We can hear you. Can you hear me? We hear you, Bob. Oh, he's saying you're on. Go off, Bob. Can you hear me yet? Yep, we got you good. Okay, you should be live. Oh, awesome. That's fine. It's just not showing up on the. Yeah, Mike, crazy yeah, night, huh? We called it with the, uh, this not the same black live. Oh, they can hear, he, can, he can't hear me, but I'm coming through his fair picture. Is audio stuff fine? Oh, that's fine. fine. So I can't hear Mike. But I can Maybe hear you. Can hear me. We can hear you. Can you hear me? You hear you, Oh, he's saying you're on. Oh, you I, I won't be able to hear you, Mike. Okay, not in real time. Fine. If I watch the Periscope, I'll be like 20 seconds behind. Yeah, Mike, crazy yeah, night, huh? Audio we called it with the... Uh, well, it'll, it'll, it'll soon be 20 line. seconds behind. Oh, he, can, he can't hear me, but I'm coming through his Periscope. I'm going to call I'm gonna call Jesse oh, and see if he uh, has any pointers for I can't hear Mike. But I can Maybe hear you. Hear me. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, he's saying you're on. Oh, this is I, I feel like we just got caught in a time loop. That was pretty wild, actually. It was like I was talking, and then he was talking, but then I was talking to him, and then he was talking to um, a past version of me. There, that was. Um, I watched a, a pretty good movie called Time Loop. I felt like that was like a time loop where I was talking to him, but then. In the present, but then he was talking to me in the past. And then we were both in the present to you. But then we time traveled together into the past. I don't even understand what just happened there. I that that was like simulation code broke. So he was talking to me, the past version of me in the present, and then you were shown the present version of the conversation happening in the past. I don't even, like I said, that was, that was pretty intense. I'm not even on mushrooms or LSD or anything. That was a time loop. That was a time loop.
Let's try this. All right. Talk Some inception about. level shit, huh? Man. Okay. So I think we got you good now live. <laughs> Don't you love this audio stuff? Like we're supposed to be like political guys, but then we have to deal with all this audio and camera stuff. Well, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, you know, amateur yeah. level audio shit at my phase in the game is, it's, it embarrasses yeah. me. It's not like funny anymore. Uh, this isn't 2017. You know, I'm just a guy in my spare you. room with a green, you know, this yeah. is, it's humiliating, but we'll the fix it. Like wall. I said, I forgot all about that. I forgot all about that. Exactly. The green wall. Almost famous has been on Vice, <laughs> HBO, 60 Minutes. But anyway, let's talk. What's going uh, on, man? What's going on in this world? So we called it, man. We called it, right? You know, it was really easy for all these conservative bros to say this was a bunch of black hoodlums, a bunch of black protesters. The protesters were also the wieders, who were also the looters. But, you know, we studied this. You and I, we marched with the, uh, the, DN the anti-DNC protesters. We know, you know, even Black Lives Matter protesters are maybe like 15% black, 20% black. It's a lot of white Occupy, white anti Hispanic people, you know, and I'm glad we called it early. Yeah, and I think it's fair. Um, yeah, so one is I'm just glad for, for our own gratification that we called it yeah. early. But I, I just think in terms of, like, telling the truth and caring, and not only that, mm -hmm. but forming coalitions. This this is what right. blew, me, blew me away about, um, you know, Trump not showing up right now. He tweeted a couple. Th so what happens is I tweet a meanie thing about Trump, and then suddenly five minutes later he tweets me. After his yep. people are like, yep. what are you doing? You know, I get yelled, like, I get yelled at. So people would not believe, like, the high-level yeah. people who yell at me literally every mm -hmm. day. But then he tweets, mm -hmm. but we need a press conference for him, you know? But but Javanka, yeah. and this is a problem, Javanka and Jared with their white savior complex don't even know right. that Killer Mike just put CNN on blast. <laughs> Black Lives Matter put Antifa on blast. If Trump says I'm against the looting, but I, I support talking to Black Lives yes. Matter, that's a coalition. Yes. Game and, over. Yeah, game over, right? Game over for the other side. Right, right. And and look at this. If people are really tracking this, look, Brad said that he wants to put Minnesota in contention. Three weeks, four weeks ago, the Minnesota governor, after Trump tweeted, liberate uh, Minnesota, entirely collapsed. And then the governor collapsed again with this whole, let's, uh, you know, put, put it on the street. So, you know, the Democrats must have Trump polling pretty high in Minnesota. If he's not using that capital to build new coalitions, Trumpian coalitions, you know, 12, 13 percent of the black vote, that's a total shutdown. He went to Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota. It will totally change the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party will move right like H.W. and Reagan did uh, with, with Clinton. So this type of cowardice kind of that we're seeing from the White House, they should thank God that they have allies like you and I and, and honest contrarians because, like, we're going to be the people who form a winning coalition that prevent this country, and I'm just going to say it, from becoming a Latinx ghetto, Okay. We need the white race and the and the black race. Let's we need, not use we need racial, all races to let's get along. Not, yeah, let's oh. not use racial. They'll, they'll frame me. You know, I got to be careful. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> they'll frame me. I'm trying to yeah. bring unity, and you know, you you, you know, we gotta we gotta be you know, we gotta be uh, conscientious. What what was the um? There's a line from the Bible. You gotta be gentle as doves, but as wise as serpents, right? Yeah. Uh, right. 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 Yeah, but but honestly, there's a real come together that can happen if we just like talk really frankly about some of these issues and, and, and what better issues than George Floyd, where 99% of people are on the same side. I think this is a real missed opportunity for the president to show leadership. Um, and, you know, instead he's like fighting with Twitter, you know, and, 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 and thug this, thug that, like, you know, come on, dude, step it up, you know? Yeah. And, and going, you know, I'm all for a good old, uh, Make Joe uh, Scar Scarborough eat his own home cooking. I'm all for that, mm -hmm. but not now. Mm -hmm. you, you know that's what you do when it's like a. You wake up, you're like, well, kind of dead today. The country's not burning down. Did Joe Scarborough murder an intern? You know that's when you tweet that kind of stuff out. 
And right, like r really, yeah. that's when you create a new cycle, and then Joe gets mad, yeah. and you go, "Well, I mean, you know, you asked me if I was a Russian asset, and who, you know, where's your moral authority?" And then, right. but like right now, like I want to see my if my president were Barack Obama, I would want to see my president right now. I want to see my president yeah. right now. I'm not seeing it, man. And yeah. why, why do you think that is? Yeah, I would invite every black local leader that I found in a viral clip that was denouncing out-of-town protesters, and I would mix them in with my existing black coalition, and I'd have an Oval Office meeting, and I would totally reposition the DNC to be agreeing with me out-of-town rioters. I mean, he has such an opportunity to win here. But, you know, I mean, you, you get the same kind of messages on these apps that I get, you know, whenever we, we go against, uh, you know, the team. And it's like, you know, thank God, though, for us. Thank God that we're um, negotiating and creating some points of leverage and contention because otherwise, you know, you have people who aren't that brave, people who aren't going to speak truth to power to the president or, you know, Jared or Ivanka. And um, they got to get brave when they see some of us going astray. Or, or in my view, just even, like, where are the people who are just cynical? You know, if you're just a cynical person, <laughs> like, and you read the Machiavelli, the Prince of the 48 Laws of Power, and you're just some, like, dumb fuck college kid who read Robert Greene yeah. once, you would literally be like, hey, uh, coalition building time. You know, this is, like, a pretty big <laughs> opportunity. You can scoop up. Yeah. You can scoop up a lot of people right now. And why aren't yeah. you scooping them up? So, you know, morality is one thing and blah, blah, blah. But to me, I just as a, just as a person, right? You're like, why are you not, why are you not picking, yeah. picking up this coalition? And, and you can, yeah. and you can play it with people. Go, oh, start of it, you play both sides. I don't play both sides. I'm a coalition builder. I'm a coalition right. builder who says, hey, if Black Lives Matter riots, I will call it a riot. But if it's in Tifa right. and street gangs, who kick Black Lives Matter out of their own protest and riot, I'm not going to call that a Black Lives Matter riot because it's just not true. And, and, you're, right. not, and you're not building coalitions. So you can, you can skim right. 20, 30 percent of Black Lives Matter and just be like, hey, we, we hear you, we see you, we know these people aren't you. And you don't mm -hmm. need 80 percent of them. You need 20 percent of, of that coalition. Yeah. And so I'm just sitting here thinking, like, you know, why is this not happening? And, and I just saw, yeah. you know, Ryan, Ryan um, uh, Gudowski tweeted out. So Trump just tweeted out a uh, proclamation on African-American Music Appreciation Month 2020. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you, oh my God. Okay. I'm, this, this breaking news. No. Uh, the lyrics and melody. I trolling it. No, no, I'm, I'm going to read. I'm going to read it. I can't believe this is a farce. Um, no, no, it's like literally a farce. Uh, the lyrics and melodies of African-American music have played a powerful role in defining America's unique soundscape. 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 From, the soulful, from the soulful streets of the Big Easy to the recording studios of Los Angeles, African-American music has shaped our American culture. During African-American Music Appreciation Month, we pay tribute to the monumental achievements of African-American artists who pioneered and evolved oh the blues, God. jazz, oh gospel, rock and roll, rap, hip-hop, and other iconic genres. Literally, that's what they just tweeted oh out, bro. Gosh. This is, this is oh absurd. My gosh. We, this is a free live staff. in a farce. Yeah. Yeah, white staff. I, oh, my gosh. You know, I, what I would have, Mr. President, it's African American Music Appreciation Month. Let's tune up some uh, Nina Simone and and throw that up on Instagram. You know, like like let's you know let's counter signal every you know the people who know with a wink and a nod. And man, what a missed opportunity! Gosh, that's so embarrassing. But the only you know, way whatever. the only I'm way could cringe. be the only way could be more cringe if they were like, as we were listening to Snoop Dogg and rolling up a blunt, <laughs> we 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 meditate on the. A great kind of <laughs> soundscape too. Soundscape is a, a new one on me. Soundscape, <laughs> yeah. yeah, me too, me too. I mean, that reminded me of uh, of 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 uh, Ivanka during the, the beginning of the Corona when she was doing the AMSR yes. Corona Paris. <laughs> you know, like you know, uh, uh, 
I don't even know. You know, Bone Thugs, apostrophe after the N and Harmony, um, played this song, you know. Yeah. Give me a break. Give me a break. Yeah, I, I that that's African American pre so so there you go. March, um or rather not March, but um May. So I guess May. it'll be in June. I don't know, because it came out so it's for immediate release dated May 29th, 2020. So I don't know if May is the month or if we're leading into right. June. So I'm even I'm even confused. <laughs> I don't even know when the Where's month the is. Soundscape? Yeah, that Where you know, is the soundscape? <laughs> yeah, I don't even this I can't believe this, bro. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, this is crazy. But, but you know what? This, this is something too that people are like, "Hey, how did you and Mike call it?" And I was like, "Look, you know, you know, you study these groups of people, and one thing you'll notice is, you know, these losers who get paid thirty or forty thousand dollars a year by this obscure nonprofit, they just change names to whatever they can do to attract young people to their cause, and they've been doing this for." five years, 10 years, 15 years or whatever. And so it's gone from the anarchist right. high war left to occupy, to resist, to Antifa. And it's just going to always be adapting. And, and, um, you know, you and I, you know, when we were, when, you know, you and I weren't even actually friends at the time, but at that BNC March where we saw each other, you know, we remember those black lives matter protesters, the organizers were there. We said, Hey, all whites in the back, and they were talking about the pigs and this and this and this, and they have all their signs. And one thing I, you know, I told my audience is, why isn't Compton rioting? Why isn't Oakland rioting? You know, yesterday, why wasn't Atlanta rioting? Chicago. And that's when you knew this wasn't black. There were no demands. There were none of those anti-cop, you know, disgusting chants. There was nothing about black people. There was no say his name. You know, this was a very bizarre, whipped up thing from the anarchist left, the Antifa left, and yes, some BLM or whatever. And then they got some locals involved, some Cleveland's involved. And uh, frankly, you know, I'm not being racial, but some Somalis involved. There's a huge ethnic uh, thing going on in in, uh, in Minneapolis. And, and I just think like, you know, I just want journalists to really like assess what they're talking about and not paint all these 50 states the same way and not all black people the same way, and not all white people the same way, and not all Trump voters the same way. Like, they owe it to us to tell us what's happening on the ground, because what if we want to step up as a people? What if we want to come together as a people? What if we finally want to have this national dialogue or this national conversation they keep talking about? What if we're finally ready for that? And we keep getting deprived of that, but, you know, that's why I'm glad, like, the downfall of cable news will mean that, you know, maybe through the internet we'll shock each other's realities and to the point where we can just come together and make something of all the pieces. Yeah, you know, it, it could be, or, um, because, yeah, you know, flashback to 2016, and that's why we predict a lot of things. I remember when I was at 2016, and, because I didn't know anybody at the time, and, and actually, um, so Cassandra Fairbanks, was I think she was kind of lefty then or Bernie? I'm not really sure. Yeah. Temple was with Infusion, and there was a guy with a knife, and Cassandra was with me, and she said, "Oh yeah, avoid those people. That's like black block or something." There were like three people in Antifa. Mm. Yeah, it was like three mm -hmm. people, and he was just like a total criminal. And my perspective was like, "I will roll this guy. Are you kidding me?" You know, but you know, obviously I couldn't say that. <laughs> and those are the people yeah. who burned a flag. There were just a few of them. And then I started to know, so this is a, this is a propped up group. This is not, this is, and they're all white. Antifa's white. This is a fact. In, in, in fact, one joke I made that never caught on that I, I believe it should have was when David Campbell, a, a member of Antifa, convicted felon now, attacked an old man outside of one of my events, and the guy didn't even know who I was. The reason he got arrested was he hit a cop. And I said, how much white privilege do you have to think you can hit a cop, right? Because if you're I actually know. black, you're not going to hit a cop. You're like, dude, I'll end up Heck like George no. Floyd. Street rules. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, the mob, the mob and black people have, have those rules. You know, don't hit civilians and don't hit cops. You know, everything else is fair game, but you don't hit a cop. <laughs> yeah, but if you have white privilege because you grew up rich, 
you're like, oh, yeah, I mean, what's the big deal? You know, you hit a cup. And then, you know, the, the guy, there was like a broken leg. I think the guy, I think David Campbell got his leg broken by the cops, actually. It's like, yes, this is why Black Lives Matter do not hit cops. So Antifa is white privilege. They go out there like, oh, yeah, we could just fight the cops in the street. But if you know anything about anything and you don't have this kind of privilege, you would never do that. Only a white man, literally, literally only a white man would fight a cop outside of an event, right? But that's that's the way right. they are. And, and the media, again, they gin it up, which is like, you just tell the truth. Just say what's happening tonight, not Black Lives Matter, it's Antifa and street gangs raising hell. And then send yeah. to the National Guard and just, you know, take, take these people into jail because you're not taking the real protesters into jail. Because even um, right. you know, Martin Luther King's daughter walked back because at first she kind of fell for it too, Beatrice King. And right. she was like, oh, right. so, and then she found yep. out what was happening because she probably reads her stuff. And she was like, oh, I didn't mean it. You know, I didn't mean it. Like, because they figured it out. Yep. Like, you're getting psyoped. Like, you're getting framed by Antifa. Like, we're not the enemy here on this. You know, we don't agree on a lot of things. We're going to disagree on a lot of things. But uh, we, we all hate Antifa. You just get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you though, I got a little bit of hope because of all the protests I've ever seen, and obviously they're escalating, uh, you know, cycle to cycle, uh, but all the protests I've seen, this is the first one where I've seen um, uh, black community leaders come out so forcefully against that white Antifa and that white uh, out of towner. Uh, uh, and, and it's multiple colors, right? It's not just white people, but, you know, predominantly. Uh, white organized Soros funded black Rock manual type of tactics they're coming out and it's multiple people and so I'm, I'm actually loving that element because I think a lot of people are getting red pilled you know well, I don't even know if it's the left and the right a lot of people are like whoa there's a, a lot of dynamics at play in our in our uh, republic and and now you have like these fringe white nationalists and then these fringe leftists agreeing oh this is only black people this is only a black concern whereas everyone else is kind of like i don't know this is looking a little more complex to me you know and um it's looking like america and so you know i don't know i have a lot of hope i mean i'm really sad for the country and i'm really sad about trump's response and um you know and there's a lot of confusion and i don't want to blame people for that but i'm so frustrated by it but um but i have a lot of hope that, that people are getting woke to the PSYOP element, right? The, the breaking the fourth wall, the programming, the game theory, you know, of all of this. And we now know that CNN are participants in the controversy, that Soros, you know, ran these startups that are probably now going to get Chinese funding uh, to continue operating through the election, and, and people are getting wiser to it. I don't know if we'll get super wise to it, but but... You know, that's the one hope that I have is that more people are waking up to the tactics that have been happening while they have their nine to five jobs. They're well, kind they of are. like, oh, Ali, uh, yeah, yeah, Ali and Sinovich weren't just losers online. They like they know their stuff. You know, here's here's how I know they're getting woke to it is I watched uh, Beatrice King yesterday say, you know, my dad talked about riots. This is when the people aren't heard yesterday. She was kind of mm -hmm. like defending it today. She's like, whoa, whoa, I'm walking all that back. And that's proof yeah. of our message. So it's proof of a lot of things. One is they are paying attention. And two yeah. is it's our duty to say, look, man, you know, I'm not, I don't agree with probably seven out of 10 things, black, eight out of 10 things. But if there are two things that we agree on, then why don't we, and, and this is the frustrating thing mm -hmm. for me is why don't we work together on the two things and then we can go fight each other again, you know? Let, let's, it, it's, yeah. kind, it's, it's, it's to me classic like coalition building is, which is like, hey, a lot of things you say I don't agree with at all, not even a little, yeah. but I agree with you yeah. that the George Floyd, thing, George Floyd thing was murder. So why don't we talk right. about that, see what we can do about that, and then six months from now you can be like, well, there's these other things, and I'm like, well, I don't agree with you on those things, so you know we can argue again, but let's just like – we don't have to be friends, right? It's like, I'm not trying to be friends with everyone, but how about we just form a useful alliance on a couple issues that are that everybody agrees on, 
Because that's what frustrates me about the George Floyd thing is 99% of people are like, yep, murder, murder. That was murder. Murder. It was murder. And and, and now we're fighting about riots. So often. Yeah. Right. So now we're fighting about riots caused by Antifa and street gangs when it's like, well, why don't we just focus on it was murder. We agree it's murder. Let's talk about two of the four officers are people of color and they didn't intercede. And then I watched Mm -hmm. a video, not to get too conspiratorial, but you know, a a video surfaced where like the paramedics had bulletproof vests on and they had guns and they didn't really look like paramedics to me. So like they didn't render aid. Even, even the fraternal order of police yesterday issued a statement saying an officer of the law is a first responder and your job as a police Mm -hmm. officer is to render aid and no one rendered this man. So you have the fraternal order of police saying, essentially, murder, mm-hmm. murder, or at yeah. least negligent homicide. And instead of being like, oh, wow, yeah. so the fraternal order of police is on our side here. Okay, well, this is a good thing. And, you know, let, let's right. figure out this stuff. Nope. It, it gets appropriate because CNN and everybody else, they want to gen it up and make it. But, but this is why I'm optimistic is I really do think – that people are waking up. Uh, not not everybody, but we don't need everybody. We need Beatrice King and a few other right. people who are like, I don't like Cernovich most of the time, but right. this thing is true. So we're going to work on this true thing. And then I'll, I'm not like him. That's kind of what I said when the coronavirus hit was, I said, all you people who hate me, you can go back to hating me, right? Let's just right. figure out the right. nursing home things and the mass deaths and everything else. Right. I yeah, I don't need you. I have enough friends. And that I think that's what people are waking up to is, yeah, we can work together on a couple. Ted Kennedy, did that. for all his many, many flaws, I'm certainly not defending Ted Kennedy. That's like one thing that he was famous for was, okay, we yeah. can work together on this one thing, and then we'll do this one thing together, and then we'll fight again. And great. Right. I'm, I'm all for that. So, yeah, people are waking up. I'm optimistic, actually. To be honest, I am optimistic. I think people have figured out what's going on. Right. And I think that's where a little bit of this, you know, I don't want to say it's giddiness, but this this, uh, this responsiveness where we want to inform our audiences is coming from. It's like this is the first time in modern American history where experts from their various fields can come together in a decentralized way, in a democratized way, and say, you're being lied to, you're being programmed. And, hey, guess what? It's not for the Republican Party or it's not for the Democrat Party. There are uh, actors that are bigger than the party, that are bigger than the religion. And, um, and, and people are certainly waking up, and I agree with you. And, I, I mean, I'm, getting, I'm just going to brag on us because history is never going to give us credit. There was a 100% narrative that this was organized Black Lives Matter. And I do not like Black Lives Matter, okay? I, I hate Black Lives Matter, but, but this is 100% organized Black Lives Matter from the top in Minneapolis and L.A. And I was like, well, why can't we find any black people in L.A.? You know, why can't we find any uh, demands? Why can't we find, say her name, say his name? Where are the posters of the other black victims from the year? You know, why are all these Antifa accounts on Twitter, which Twitter has not banned, uh, 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 tweeting? And, like, without you, you know, sounding the megaphone on this issue, it really would have put right-wing media well behind mainstream media, and mainstream media is just getting it today. But we had about half of right-wing media get it yesterday. So, you know, I mean, you know, I love to brag about us, but, but, but to brag about us is like, is like the truth. The truth will allow all of us to assess where we are. Poor white, poor black, rich white, rich black, you know, Killer Mike, Donald Trump, Kanye West, Taylor Swift. Like, we'll all get together once we just acknowledge, like, where we all are, where we all stand on the issues, and act like an actual republic or an actual democracy instead of this, like, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, you know, program to fight and not actually come up with any resolutions. I want to see the, the rules of engagement for police officers with excessive force change. You know, that's what I want to see. But when you have police unions and BLM arguing for CNN time, we're never going to get that. So, like, I don't know if we'll get legislation in the 50 states this time, but, but boy, are we inching closer 
because people are, are realizing like this is several layers of fucked up going on right now. And there are people who stand to make a lot of money keeping us at each other's throat, including China, which has trillions of dollars at risk over what happened today, you know, including DOJ officials who don't want to go to jail for what they did to General Flynn today. I mean, you know, there are a lot of people who want to see riots in the street this weekend. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's why it's our job, too, and why I'm trying to show leadership and why I don't pander like a lot of people do is that, like, I view it as my job. In, in a way, like, one of the, the great blessings that God gave me was they've made me such a fringe character <laughs> that I could never work in the White House, which means I don't have to booty right. smooch anyone. It's like, oh, no, right. if I say a bad thing, my super PAC funding might, oh, Oh, so I don't have a super bad funding. I don't have anybody behind me. I don't have anybody doing shit for me. So I don't have, and that was again, the gift from God, because there's no temptations. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Like, I'm going to get another nasty message from people saying, we watched your scope and Jared's very upset. And I can't believe you. It's like, oh no, what are you going to do? Oh, you're not going to write me another check. How will I ever survive without your great support? And so, so I think our job our job is to to call out when our own people are being dumb. Like me, I'm like, look, he was murdered. Oh, you're saying he's not? You're a dumbass. Like the end, end of story kind of thing. And, and that really is that really is the gift from God is that we don't have to to booty smooch because we're not. Mm -hmm. there, there's nobody to booty smooch. There's nobody helping us. We're on our own. Right. They made that very clear, and that's fine. I'm glad to be on my own for that very reason. And then what happens is the reasonable minds, that's why when I did hoax, I made Black Lives Matter look like rocks. Nobody's right. ever made a film that made them look as good as I made them look. And there's a reason <laughs> for that, which is yeah. you're right on this one thing, this one issue, and we're going to make you look good on this one issue so that we can talk about this one issue. And then, you know, they, they, you know here, here's another great point. Um, it's now known, Sean King, we're a probate scammer. But the celebrities are promoting oh, him. Yeah. Susan Sarandon is saying, give him money. Like, wait a minute. Why is it these white liberals are saying, fun right. Sean King, a man committed suicide after Sean King falsely accused him. Remember that? A guy, people, for whatever reason, they want to talk about me all the time. It's like, okay, I never drove anybody to commit suicide, right? So Sean King mm -hmm. falsely accused a police officer of raping a woman. Well, that was fake. He did it from Twitter and nothing happened. And then he falsely accused someone else of being the suspect in another uh, shooting, killing, and a person committed suicide in jail. Pfft. Today, yep. Susan Saran is like, give him money. Give him your money. Make him, make him, the, there's a reason, bro. There, there's a reason right. that they're doing that. And people are waking up and be like, yeah, that's, you know, why would you promote this guy? Why would you promote these scumbags? Yeah. Well, that's why. Because right. they know that's how you divide people. Right. They're bought and paid for. I mean, think about this. You know, for, for your entire audience, you got retweeted by the president, you know, a month, a month and a half ago or whatever it was. And, and like, you're not sitting here still kissing his butt. There are a lot of people who will. They won't get paid. And they'll get a quote retweet of a retweet or something like that from the president. And they will say a bad word a constructive word, a contrarian word against the campaign. And, you know, and that's why we'll lose and we'll lose the country. I mean, forget Trump's Republican party. We'll, we'll like lose the country in the entire process. If one of these wackos, you know, these illiberal progressives get in office and it's like, it's like, yeah, people are waking up to the game. I mean, it's nurses, it's doctors, it's lawyers, it's, you know, GOP hacks like me. It's, you know, a lot of people are waking up to the game and like, and like, we don't want puppet masters. Like we're either going to row together uh, or, you know, I don't know, a peaceful divorce or something like that. Well, but, uh, so the thing is, I don't even know it's a peaceful divorce. So here's so kind of like the way I look at it is, you know, if you have 10 people in a room, five people are shirts, five people are skins. Five people are blue, five people are... That's just the nature of it. It doesn't matter if all 10 people came from Great Britain. and You know, they have this utopian, you know, whatever people say they want, monoculture. It's like they still are going to fight. and They're going to fight viciously. And so that's just the way it is. 
but the idea is how about we not fight over fake shit, right? How about we not fight over tonight? How about we not fight over, like, if I'm going to argue with Black Lives Matter, I'm going to argue with them over their real shit. I'm not going to argue with them mm -hmm. over the fake psyop that Susan Sarandon and white liberals are doing by telling people the fun Sean King who's stolen millions of people from people, or millions of dollars from people, mm -hmm. that, that, that he's called out by his own organizers. So I'm going to be like, no, 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 no. You're not going to do that. I'm going to argue with these people on real issues, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with them over this fake kind of psyop stuff. So again, that's what I think these, these, and that's why we've never seen this before, by the way, this is historical where there mm -hmm. are now multiple videos from multiple events where black lives matter has told Antifa get out of here. <laughs> that never would have happened without yeah. us. That's just a fact. That's yeah. not that's not bragging yeah. or what clout chasing. That's just an objective fact because they're like, oh yeah, this is a because two. I think they didn't even notice it at first, and then they watch no, us. I, I, like, I, oh, yeah. They didn't know. Yeah, he's making a good point. That's not my people doing this. This is these white yuppie kids who just want to break windows and look right. cool. That's who's doing it. Oh, that's why they always show up with an umbrella. You right. know. Oh, that's why they have the gas mask before we do. You know, and then they hand out scarves to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm I'm optimistic. I think tonight was a clarifying moment for the country. Um, I mean, how could it not be? I, like I said earlier, I don't know if you're on this podcast, but the stream earlier, but I said that like I produce films and if somebody gave me a script where they go, oh yeah, a major black cultural icon is going to tell CNN their office being attacked was karma. I'd be like, come on, <laughs> you got to rewrite the script. <laughs> Get out of here. Rewrite this yeah. shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I love about that is okay, so like a lot of people think like, okay, what's the most famous rapper from Atlanta or come out of Atlanta and they think of TI, you know, and 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 T I looks up to Kill Mike. I mean, Kill Mike's this OG. This guy's like was political before artists were political, but he's like political in a authentic I'm gonna get mine for my people type of way, not a I'm going to play the Hollywood game type of way. And it's like, if Kill Mike actually would have sat up there and just said, yo, we see it in alone, they would have left. But that's not what Killer Mike said. <laughs> he said, karma's a mother. You know? <laughs> and I just thought like, wow, you know, you know, like, you know, what a seminal moment. But yeah, I mean, you gotta, people cannot appreciate what is happening in that clip. Killer Mike is institutional. To not just you know black Atlanta, but all of Atlanta. Yeah, he, and and not only hey, all of Atlanta, but he's he's you know? so culturally significant. Like I know who he is. This you know this is yeah. um, George Clooney. You know a black. This is a icon. This is not, this is not just yeah. like a random guy. So not only is he yeah. an icon in terms of like mass fame, but he's an icon to other black influencers. So yeah. like you said, yeah. Ti is going to be like, oh yeah. Because remember, yeah, T.I. T. Yeah. I had a civil conversation with Alex Jones, right? Right. And, and they right. don't want, they've got mad at that, you know? They got mad at that. They're like, right. oh, wait, exactly. they're having civil convos. And, and, then, and then what, like, Killer Mike learned, too, was, and this is the truth about Alex. If you confront Alex and you're like, you said this thing, he'd be like, you're right. That was a bad thing, you know? And then you're like, oh, wait, the media tells me that this guy is just evil, and, and, and if right. you were like, why'd you say this thing? He'd be like, well, you know, it was a long night and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then when you actually sit down, you're like, oh, damn, you know, he'll own it. Yeah. And, and then yeah. as you have these conversations, you realize that, okay, maybe, maybe I had people wrong. So tonight, seminal moment. Seminal moment, I think, yeah. for the world, for our culture. Oh, I'm not pulling your shirt, babe. Yes, you like I didn't pull your shirt at all. Yes, you did. Cyrus developed the art of gaslighting. She'll be like, you're pulling my shirt. Uh, I'm literally it. not pulling your shirt. So she's like, <laughs> stop pulling my shirt. It's like, I didn't pull your shirt. She's like, yes, you did. And then she'll be like, you pull it right here. I'm like, I did. I literally didn't do that. But <laughs> yeah, by the way. Yeah, so I love it. She's the queen. Yeah, so if anybody is wondering, yeah, we also don't have bedtime. It's 944 and she's just like hanging out. And, and it's all that. So yeah, so I'm, I'm actually... I think tonight, I don't want to call it a turning point because we're going to have a lot of 
I call it an inflection right. point because we're going to go down mm -hmm. and we'll back up. But tonight was an inflection point where people realized, okay, um, CNN's misrepresenting the Black Lives Matter movement and these far-right French people are actually giving people a fair shake. So maybe, um, you know, a killer, I'm not me. Killer Mike's the one who said what happened tonight to CNN. Could you imagine if I said what happened tonight to CNN was karma? Oh, I would no. be banned oh, so no. fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Glorification of violence. He said karma. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, I would have been nuked during my stream when I said it, but when it killer Mike, what are they going to do now? Is CNN going to have to kill Mike now? They're going to go after TI now. They're going to go after everybody now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the culture. It's amazing. Yeah, the culture. Yeah, yeah. The culture's changing. And in, in that regard, I am. Um, I'm certainly optimistic. So, well, you know, because yeah, yeah. what you're watching tonight is it's like a fever breaking. Um, it's like, it's like a fever breaking and people are starting to wake up and realize, all right, like, why don't we just, uh, again, you know, there, there's a, one of those shows, there's a line like, oh, you know, I'm not your friend, but I'm an ally and it's actually better that I'm your ally than your friend. That's like adult thinking. Adult thinking is, I don't want to come over to your house and hang out with you. I don't like you like that. Yeah. But... But you got my back on this issue that's significant to me and my people. Then I got your back on, you know, that other issue that's significant to you. That's actually better. Yeah. Friends are flaky. Friends are like, well, yeah. you know, I mean, think about it. I've been put on blast and my real life friends are just like, you know, I'm not trying to get in, you know, I'm not trying to get in the middle of this. <laughs> so they're, you know, yeah. they're realizing it's like alliance. Just form alliances, work together on certain issues, fix those issues. And then we can all, you know, we can all go back to this other kind of stuff. And the Chinese hate black yeah, people too. Like, more adult, right? Yeah, I mean, Chinese, Way more. China and Africa colonizing yeah. it. So there, there, there's, the, you know, it's like if you want to be mad at the French and the British for colonizing Africa hundreds of years ago, how about you f look at what's actually happening <laughs> now? But then NBC and CNN, yeah. they take that Chinese money. So they don't report it. So most yeah. people don't actually know. Like, no, no. Like all the stuff that you read about history as being awful from colonial, which it was awful from colonialism. Yeah, awful. This is literally happening right now, but they're not going to report right. it because they're taking right. that good Chinese money. And then you're like, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Now we're starting to. So like I said, tonight, I'm not falling for the headlines. I'm not falling for the fake division. I think tonight was spiritually an awakening, a catharsis for a lot of people. And, and I think you're, I don't think, I know for a fact, you're going to see changes. You're going to just see little things where you're like, oh, why is, you know, why is T.I. talking to Alex Jones? Alex Jones is an evil man. Right. Uh, is he more evil than CNN? You know, well, actually, no, because Alex will own his <laughs> stuff. And because yeah. that's what I love is CNN would try to be like, well, Alex, and Alex would be like, that's a good point. You know, I never thought about that. And you're like, oh, yeah. Whoa, okay, okay, um, shit, because cause that's the thing is, like, when you argue with people, the, the French, people like us, and you're like, and you spit facts, we're like, oh, okay, I had never considered those facts. I will consider right. those facts now. Whereas with CNN, they're just like, well, we never said that, and you're a d evil person, or oh, whatever. Yeah. They're just completely, completely dishonest. And so people are going to realize, like, okay, there's some people here you might not agree with on a lot of things. But, but, what's the alternative? Yeah. Let CNN drive the narrative. Right. And we had their back on this most important issue that was super clarifying, super obvious. And, and by the way, we didn't like what the police were doing during the pandemic anyway. You know? So, so yeah, I, I, I think it's good. I think it's good. It's, it's sad. We're going to have to go through a little pain this weekend, a lot of pain maybe this weekend. And there could be other forces at work between China and, and people who are uh, want to keep the Flynn stuff uh, covered up. But, um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I think there was an inflection point spiritually uh, in this American experiment. And, um, and, you know, when the people come together, it's going to be pretty bad for these, these corporate or state influences. And more people are waking up not even realizing 
that they've been, that their career has been guided, you know, even if they didn't get a paycheck from Qatar or China, uh, you know, they might have been on a, a on a campaign or part of an ad campaign or part of a, a mob that uh, got sponsored from a nonprofit that was sponsored by them. So, uh, you know, and I don't know, and, you know, earlier I didn't. And, th- and this is a little too deep, I think, for the Killer Mike types yet. Yeah, it's too deep for them now, but they'll figure – and I don't mean that they can't comprehend it. I just mean that they don't live it. Like you and I, and we're not going to name names because that will just create its own drama. But there are like four or five different people at certain little places agitating all this stuff. And yeah. <laughs> so the first layer is realizing tonight the <laughs> onion, the, you know, the peeling the onion is, hmm, so yeah, CNN, they're kind of dodgy people. And then you look deeper, you're like, oh, yeah, but there's actually a couple people within CNN who are Antifa propagandists. And, mm-hmm. oh, okay, okay, so this is this is what it's really about. And then you find out, oh, that's why they want to ban these people. That's why those certain people are like the hatchet men that go after people right. like you, people like me, because they know, because if you pay attention to us, you're like, wait, th- th- and this happens to me all the time where people are like, man, I never wa- watched your stuff. I've been watching your stuff for like six months and you've never said anything like really that bad. I don't agree with you, but I'm like, I'm waiting for like, you know, I'm there, people are like follow me. Like I'm waiting for this like really nasty stuff to come right. out and it like right. never comes out. Right. And you're like, well, yeah, cause there isn't the, the it's <laughs> fake. Yeah. I don't go around shouting the N word or, or, uh, you know, whatever else they would have you say or bathing in oil. You know, like that doesn't exist. Yeah, I'll do streams. Like, yeah, I'll take down three bottles of wine on a stream. The most authentic <laughs> version of me. And it's like, you're like, oh, he's going to do it now. The real Cerno is going to come out now. It's like, no, um, actually, no. What you see is is really what you get. But then what you see with CNN and these other outlets, they're the ones hiding. They're the ones agitating. They're the ones really trying to, like, like I said, but we don't have to say Killer Mike said it, and yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I, that's going to get a lot of play. Killer Mike was trending. Killer Mike is one of the number one trends <laughs> right now, so we don't have to say it. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Killer Mike, you can hate me tomorrow. You can disavow me tomorrow. I won't even be mad. I won't even be mad. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate the shout out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, do your yeah. do your thing, man. All right, well, I think I'm gonna take off now. My cigar is burned out, but All thanks right. for calling, my brother. I appreciate it. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Cernovich, Mike Cernovich, C E R N O. Mike is one of the number one trends right now. C E R N O V I C H dot com. Thanks for watching. People are waking up. People are waking up, and they know. People know what's up. Like I said. I don't have to say it. Thank God I don't have to say it. Killer Mike said it. Karma. Mike Cernovich. Cernovich.com. I will talk to you all. Maybe you know, I'm gonna be moving to a studio soon and be doing everyday shows. Like disciplined, regimented, structured. Every day. So that'll be as soon as I got the new place set up and everything will be cool.